uh, welcome viewers to our next episode of Future of Work podcast, where we've been talking to HR leaders from various organizations to understand what are some of the trends, challenges uh, that can make organizations as well as employees uh, to be future ready. Uh, my guest today is Aditya Tiwari. Uh, he's the global HR and talent leader for Questro. Uh, so welcome, Aditya. Really nice to have you with us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Karthik, for inviting me. And I'm sure we'll have an interesting conversation. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, so, uh, Aditya, you know, since the time the pandemic came in, you know, work, as we see, has completely changed. Uh, while, you know, some of the organizations are still calling back employees and uh, to office and, uh, you know, a lot of employees in recently Apple's incident also. So they are not open to coming back uh, to, uh, you know, work like it used to be uh, before. Uh, so from, from a leadership uh, standpoint, what do you think are some of the major employee-centric uh, challenges in front of leaders which they need to be addressing for this new norm? I think, I think this is a very great question. And nowadays, post-pandemic, like you rightly said, a lot of people are asking. I think the problems are pretty much similar, but on a different scale. Mm -hmm. uh, I would uh, like to categorize it into three uh, different parts. I think the basic problem has always been how to attract, and recruit, and retain talent. It has become more challenging in this era of digitization and people working from home. And you would have seen a lot of um, companies talking about employees moonlighting and then ghosting yeah. after the receiving of letters. And I think a lot of people work from home obviously gives a comfort. So there are certain set of people who prefer to work from office. But I think it, there's a larger chunk of people who would want uh, work from home and i think um, when you talk about cultural perspective in india in it uh, and manufacturing there would be different yes. uh, requirements but we we feel that attracting and recruiting and retaining talent has become a more uh, bigger challenge uh, in in this post covid environment and especially with the work from home also i think uh, the biggest challenge uh, what most of the manufacturing organizations are also facing is that because there are certain set of uh, position and people which cannot work from home. But at the same time, you have a lot of corporate uh, function, support functions which will work from home. And it it is difficult to create a conducive culture and keep uh, the engagement level high when you're working from home hmm. because no one was prepared for this. Uh, I think that came as a shock, but I think people are, the organizations are preparing. So it is pretty difficult to maintain or manage a particular culture or keep the engagement level high when your employees are scattered over different places. And uh, with pandemic, I think people have gone to their hometowns, tier two, tier three cities. So that's that's another challenge. Um, and I think the biggest challenge everyone, regardless of the industries, is training and upskilling. Yes. I, I think physically, if people are not there, uh, there needs to be a mindset change in upskilling and training because the skills which were uh, required pre-pandemic now there are certain skills which may not be required, but there are a lot of skills which we require at the need, at, at immediate basis. But then uh, we need to train and upskill people. So that's I think these are three broad challenges apart from a lot of different technical and technological challenge which we uh, face. And internet speed can be one, and, and others. But I think these are three very prevalent challenges post uh, COVID. Yeah. So very interestingly, you touched upon the aspect of moonlighting, right? So. Recently, it's been uh, in the news also where Richard uh, said it's, you know, it's it's completely, it's like cheating. Uh, so, uh, and it's had sharp reactions from the employees uh, side as well. Uh, and we also yeah. saw with the pandemic, uh, you know, with even the work from home, I think it, the flip side to it was also that there was too much work which was also getting offloaded on employees. And then we saw the great uh, rec uh, resignation uh, which also happened, right? Uh, so, what do you think that leaders... Uh, should do in order to reduce this attrition and retain the talent considering the uh, the game itself is changing now? See, I uh, I think a lot of times, so when I talk, I will preferably talk about India as, as a country and how work operates because there is there are a lot of different ways of operating. Europe operates in a different fashion. There is a different culture, US and, and in India. So I think to generalize, it may not be correct. So I will speak on what we think as in India or India Inc. we need to do. Yeah. And mostly I've seen a lot of people talking about things. I think all the benefits or anything we need to categorize into three basic format. One is basic, one is hygiene, and one is wow. 
and i personally feel that without doing the basic and the hygiene there is no use of going to the wow i think we need to go through through the ladder so i think primarily we need to give significant increase in in the increments or pay or benefits i think that's that's very important we fail to talk about that i don't think so in today's scenario in india you can expect people to get a 5 6 or 7% merit increase year on year and they uh, they wanting to stay back and, and be engaged yeah uh, i don't think so we can uh, give them benefits maybe a medical and benefit of 1 lakh rupees or 2 lakh rupees wherein we've seen uh, post covid the kind of bills uh, which have risen so not talking about these basic uh, things and talking about a lot of different wow i don't think so that's correct so i think this is the basic which we need to do uh, secondly i think as as humans we we long for security we long for stability yeah. organizations which do not have job security and which do not portray stability will always have a difficult time you do not have an environment which is conducive to people to stay and be stable expecting employees to be there and perform i think that's that's not done so we need to work on that and we first need to work on our basics correct Uh, secondly post covid i think most of the people have understood the importance of life uh, the switch can go off any time regardless of your age health and uh, your status so i think work life balance in india has become a very important thing we need to give them time uh, to to have recreational activities to have their hobbies and when we talk about well being i think it's financial well being physical well being and emotional well being i think we need to focus on all these three parameters not talking about emotional or not working on emotional well being is also a disadvantage i think these are the things which um, are basic to be given and obviously on top of that you need to have a diverse and inclusive workforce which gives them a great place to work and then you need to have them given great opportunities to grow i think today's people have lesser patience and i we need to act towards that so the generation z or or the coming workforce they are uh, pretty agile they are they may have a little lesser patience to be need to cater to all these things but regardless of that the basic things need to be taken care of and then your uh, growth opportunities and giving them a diverse and inclusive environment i, I think we need to work on our basics again correct okay. getting back to basics is important uh, so so you mentioned that in this new normal you know a lot of uh, shift has also happened in the kind of skill sets Uh, which are required right so some skill sets have become redundant some skill sets uh, you know people don't even have but is required uh, so what according to you would be the key skill sets which organization should look at either from a hiring standpoint or you know upgrading the existing workforce in order to you know make keep them relevant as well as future ready absolutely i think this is a very important point and every every 10 years you have different skill set but i think this process was forced forwarded by covid mm-hmm. so regardless to say that i think in today's time artificial intelligence or coding or ui ux these are the things uh, technology uh, skill sets you need to have but apart from that i think critical thinking is one uh, domain which we all as as employees and as well as employers we need to work on that and we have to create that mindset of how how we work towards it secondly when i talk about the well being in my previous question i think emotional intelligence is one thing which is always underrated uh, especially in in countries like us and i think we need to work on that mm-hmm. all the organizations which have an emotional connect and the managers having a very good emotional question will definitely make a lot of difference now which we were never working on i think that has become very very important Uh, one more aspect is now everything is becoming digital so i think uh, it's not only the responsibility of a digital marketing or a marcom with digital but every department every person every employee needs to have a digital footprint people using linkedins or people using glass doors or people using all kind of things and i think most of the things are freely available in today's time if someone wants to learn you can go on youtube and learn to code and all these things but then we need to have that mindset uh, change and and that digital uh, mindset apart from that we are in a time that all the process is getting automation so i think process automation again is one skill set which most of the departments and most of the people should own uh, because that will foster digital transformation so i think these are few things which covid has taught at least what i could understand with with my conversations with a lot of people sure true uh, so if we look at how this entire uh, pandemic kind of uh, disrupted industries workplaces work itself uh, you know a lot of the leaders uh, you know were also not equipped to kind of handle this 
sudden change and at this pace. Uh, uh, while few organizations who were invested into it earlier uh, were able to quickly adapt and move forward, but a lot of organizations are struggling also. Uh, so what could be potential roadblocks which leaders could uh, face to make their employees future ready and, and how could they probably go about addressing that? I, I think uh, pandemic has brought a lot of uh, good changes and, and the same way there are some challenges what we are facing. So I think in, in today's time, there is no lack of content or there is no lack of speciality, but there is a lack of time. Yeah. Uh, but we would always see a lot of people, a lot of influencers saying that time is not a problem. Everyone has 24 hours, reduce this time, reduce that time. But I think now more so people with their work-life balance, uh, time is a constraint. When yeah. you have eight hours of work, uh, you want employees to simultaneously upskill, train, learn and perform. Yeah. I think that is not done. We will need to give them time. We will need to give them time off out of their regular work to upskill. If we don't do that, I don't think so that upskilling is going to work. Uh, dealing with change again is, is one thing. Change management is, is a big subject which uh, we were not focusing on much. Now we are focusing on that. Uh, another thing is that I've seen a lot of uh, complex enterprise softwares. Uh, we were talking about digitization, but these systems are very complex. I think either uh, we upskill our employees to understand those things or simplify the software, whatever is, is uh, better to do. And, and I think there were a lot of ineffective uh, training methods which we need to get out of because with COVID, we've understand there are we, most of our training or the modules or mode of conducting uh, these trainings or upskillings were outdated. Yeah. I think we need to work on that. So like digitization or podcast. But to do that, there are a lot of hiccups. You need to have upgrade systems. You need to have upgrade uh, maybe a Microsoft team or, or a Zoom, the internet. I don't think so. A lot of places, the internet is stable to have a conversation. If you're having a training session, one person not having an internet may lose that focus. Yes. Uh, unlike a classroom where you stop. Yes. So I think there are a lot of different roadblocks which we need to work. And I think COVID has fast forwarded that process. Uh, I think everyone needs to be at place. So I think these are certain roadblocks which are very much uh, solvable. And I'm sure a lot of people are working on it. Uh, digitization, I've seen digitization in smaller uh, mom and pop shops. I think you go everywhere, they will have a barcode to do that. They will have a uh, biometric attendance system at the places which you, you would have never imagined. I think we are adapting, making it more simplified, but I, I think there are there's a long way to go. And um, I think we are working and we need to make future leaders which are equipped with these skills. I think leaders which were good uh, maybe 10 years back, those leaders may not be the right fit today unless and until they obviously upskill or change. True, true, true. So, so I think, uh, you know, what I get out of this conversation is one organizations need to look at the basic and hygiene first before getting into the wow. I yeah, think. before going to, going to the wow. and uh, focusing on, uh, you know, the emotional well-being and building that emotional intelligence is also an equal uh, important aspect. And I think uh, from a digitization standpoint, either upgrade the employees to utilize those digital tools well or simplify the software uh, to, so that, you know, both of them are able to shake hands uh, from that uh, standpoint. And I think looking at leadership itself for the future needs to be completely relooked. Uh, at what are those uh, you know aspects uh, which will help them to uh, you know wade through such turbulence which you know probably the future has to throw at them. Uh, so so thanks a lot, Aditya, for your time. This was a very interesting uh, conversation uh, and really loved it.